two and a half years ago. He told me he'd had enough of party politics. I'm sick of it. Preparing a party for national elections, I'm finished. He's with me now. Good Nigel, morning. Good morning. Nigel Farage, in 2016, why did you not advocate no deal? Because it was obvious that we could do a free trade deal. Uh, you know, Monsieur Barnier and the others were talking about this. The problem is the Prime Minister never asked for it, so we finished up in the mess that we're in. And it the was only obvious, way... but it didn't happen. Well, because the Prime Minister mm -hmm. didn't ask for it, she chose to go for this close and special partnership. Basically, right from the start, she was happy for us to be kept very close mm -hmm. to the customs union. So where we are now... The only way the democratic will of the people can be delivered is to leave on a WTO deal. So you accept that you weren't advocating no deal back then, which you know... Oh, no, no, no. In the referendum itself, I was the one that coined the phrase, no deal is better than a bad deal, which, of course, well, is pretty I've, obvious. I've gone back and you said it, if you said it, you said it away from the cameras and the microphones. No, 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 I can't no, I'm find sorry, examples I'm sorry, of you saying I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No deal is better than a bad deal. I was using every day for the last two weeks of that well, campaign. I, we, we can't find it. Well, you what, better look closer. What, what I can find is you talking about a deal and the possibility of a deal. Here, for an example, is well, what a free, you said. Well, a free trade deal. Well, here's an example of what you said at the time. Iceland and Switzerland can get deals that suit them, we can do something far, far better than that. Norway chooses its own deal, we will choose our own deal. But we didn't. But we had a Prime Minister who has willfully deceived us, and by the way, what she's put to Parliament three times isn't a deal, it's a new European treaty. I didn't spend 25 years campaigning to leave the European okay. Union to sign up to a new treaty. My point is fairly simple, that during the referendum you were advocating one thing and now you're advocating something different. Uh -huh. You're advocating a no-deal Well, Brexit. because the only way we can deliver the democratic will of the people is to leave on WTO terms. And I'll tell you something, once we do that, the European Union will be banging our door down to have a sensible tariff-free deal. So you can accept that from the point of view of the referendum in 2016, there is no mandate for a no-deal Brexit? I'm sorry, I couldn't disagree more. We voted to leave. We didn't vote for a deal. We voted to leave once in the referendum. The year after that, both the Labour and Conservative parties promised us in their manifestos they would honour the result of the referendum. And here we are, nearly three years on from that referendum, Brexit's not been delivered, and frankly, but given this government and given this parliament, there is no prospect of these parties delivering a clean break Brexit. But we've just heard you and everybody else on the Leave campaign saying there was going to be a deal. We are now we in a very, very different we situation. We didn't ask for a free trade deal. That is a fault of a, of a, of a Prime Minister who has willfully deceived the nation from the very beginning. But the but point here is, you're getting, she, hung, she is, she is you are getting she, hung up on the wrong subject with respect. She, she you is, are talking about deals and business, because that's as what everybody we're does. Facing. What that's about what democracy? Facing. What about democracy? Well, what about the fact that 500 MPs voted for Article 50, which said we would leave on March the 29th with or without a deal? That, Andrew, was part of UK legislation. It has not been delivered. And that's why, can I, that's why there is a massive okay. appetite for the Brexit party right now. Can because I, people want to live it to you? in a democratic country. Can I put it to you, the other way of seeing this is actually disentangling ourselves from the EU without there being an economic hit after 45 years is very, very complicated, very, very difficult. It requires nuance and patience and that is what the government has been trying to do. And in a sense, you're sitting at the back I'm of the sorry, classroom I'm sorry, I'm sorry, the government has not been doing that. The government is trying to sign us up to a new European treaty which keeps us tied in terms of our military, our security, mm -hmm. keeps us effectively inside a customs union. We have been betrayed, not just by the Conservatives, mm -hmm. Labour have done the same thing too. And ultimately, and this is what people are talking about, out Outside central London, you, do we live in a democratic country or don't we? That's the debate, Andrew, that is going on in the country. And you keep using that word betrayed D and, and, and no, betrayal. No, 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 democracy is the word I keep using. Well, and, democracy. Betray and betrayal. I've used it and, once. And, and one, of the, one of the things that you say that is a betrayal yep. is a close, relation, close relationship with the EU once we've left going forward. And again, you've changed every your tune on Every single this. major player in the referendum, everyone on both sides said leaving the European Union is leaving the single market and customs union. It could not have been clearer. But when it comes to something like a, a closer relationship as Norway has, again you're talking about betrayal and during the referendum you used to lord that, you used to present it as no, a no, wonderful no, no. opportunity. I said Norway was doing better than we were. Trouble is, trouble is the kind of proposal that some in Parliament want is Norway without the fish. We wouldn't even get a deal as good as Norway's. Look, but it, you, you, you this is our further. chance. You went, this um, is our chance. This is our chance to break free of a failing political project,
to open ourselves up to the rest of the world, to get some self-confidence back in who we are as a country. And the problem is this. The country very clearly wants us to stand up and be who we are. Our political class do not believe in Britain. They simply don't think we're good enough to run our own affairs. Well, going back to the Norway arrangement, which would be a closer rela relationship with the EU than you now want, you said you went further than you suggest. You said at the Why time. Why don't we deal with no, politics no, no. now? Well, you know, I mean, and this is I'm ridiculous. Just, I'm just this is to, I am I'm telling just... you, I'm telling you that in the referendum I said Norway is doing better than we are. However, as I said on this program, we can do much better than that. We could have gone for a free trade deal. We didn't. We're now three years on. We have to deliver the democratic will of the people of this country. And the only way we can do okay. that is by leaving on WTO terms. And you know. Something? I have to ask you a few know something? questions. Even if, even if that led to some short-term economic disruption, you know, moving house leads to short-term disruption, right. this is our future. We're talking about the, the next this, 50 years this is of our life. This is a losing house when lots of your fellow citizens may lose their jobs. Uh, or gain jobs. We could do a lot, right. lot better outside this right. European Union. And let's bear in mind that actually the vast majority okay. of UK businesses don't trade with Europe. 88% of our economy does not export right. to the European Union. Now, you say that you weren't advocating some kind of Norway-style agreement for us. You also said, wouldn't it be terrible if we were like Norway and Switzerland? Really? They're rich, they're happy, they're self-governing. Yes. We are told Norway doesn't have a seat at the top table. Oh, yes, it does. That sounds to me well, like I'm you're advocating well, a Norway... No, no, no. I was replying to David Cameron, and then I said after that, on your programme, but we can do better than that. We're not a five million country. We're a 65 million country. Yeah. We're the fifth biggest economy in the world. We've got phenomenal outreach with English-speaking countries, all sorts of other countries around the world. We can be better than Norway. We can be better than anybody if we just believe in ourselves. The tune has changed. Changed. The tune has not changed. Let's move to another area. You now say that a second referendum or another referendum would be, in your phrase, the ultimate betrayal. Mm. How can it be the ultimate betrayal when you yourself have advocated it? Oh dear, oh dear. Now look, I've said we have to prepare ourselves on the Leave side mentally for the fact there could be another referendum. If there is, we have to fight it and win it. But here's the truth. But how can it be here's a betrayal? The because we haven't even implemented the first one. You have to implement one referendum before you can even think about having another one. Mm. That's how the democratic process works with governments and should work with referendums. But here's the point. What? If we had a second referendum, I think Leave would win by a bigger margin. However, with this parliament and this government, it wouldn't be implemented anyway. And that okay. is why what, well, we need, what we need here is not just to leave the European Union. We need a different kind of politics I'm in going this to come country. on to that in a second. But before I do, let's remind ourselves what you said about a second referendum earlier on. The Cleggs, the Blairs, the Adonises uh, will never, ever, ever give up. They will go on whinging and whining and moaning all the way through this process. So maybe, just maybe, uh, I'm reaching the point of thinking that we should have a second referendum. On, because on what? On EU membership. The but, whole thing? Yes, of course. We should because have a second because referendum. Because I'm mentally saying to myself, I'm mentally saying to myself, if... It's to happen. Let's stop being in denial. And the, one of the problems here I'm sorry, was, how can it be the, the ultimate betrayal was, if you yourself were advocating it? I'm saying I'm mentally preparing myself for one, and I was then and I am now. So it's not the ultimate betrayal because you were thinking about it? I'm thinking we may well have it forced upon us. All right, well, let's move on to another area, which is uh, what you just said just, just now about reshaping British politics. Yep. You want to smash, splinter the current two-party system. You think you can take out the Tory party if they go for a referendum. Now, your party, the Brexit party, mm -hmm. has no manifesto in this election at oh, all. Oh, we're the only one with a clear policy platform. Well, you don't have a manifesto. Well, uh, do you know, I will never, ever use the word manifesto again. Manifesto, to me, has a word association with lie, because that's what we've had, an election after election. Mm -hmm. Policy platforms, no manifestos from the Brexit party. It's, 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 it's a bad, discredited word. And if you look do, at it, you know, if you look at it, you, what is the Labour Party policy in this European we're, election? We're coming on to them shortly. What is the Tory Party program? policy? We're coming on well, to I'll them tell you what well. ours is. Ours is to leave with a clean, break Brexit okay. and get on with I'm, the rest I'm of our lives. Trying to ask you some questions. Do you want to be Prime Minister? No, not particularly. So, what's going to happen if you beat the Conservative Party and smash the two-party system? If there is a great splintering of the current why system, don't we... out of the debris and the falling dust, who knows, what emerges? Who knows, the Brexit who Party knows, with you. Who knows what the future is? What I do know is we've got a two-party system that now serves nothing but itself. There is a complete breakdown of trust between the people in this country and our politicians. And frankly, the... they've revealed themselves to be grossly incompetent. And what I do want to see from this European election, if we can win these elections, absolutely I'm going to demand 
that Brexit Party MEPs become part of the government negotiating team because we can perhaps talk some sense into them. Um, the only way that we can really judge the Brexit Party in the round at the moment is by looking at its leader, looking at you. So let's look at, look at you for a moment. Well, do, right. you, do you still want to replace the NHS with a private insurance basis? I never did. I would like to take the, I would like to take the burden off the NHS. I mean, if you want to go back... Okay, yes, you, I do if, want to I, go I mean, back. This is really very boring, do, isn't it? All no, you it's want not to boring. Do, all you want no, to do, I do. All I want, you want to do is go back to stuff all, from years ago. What do we talk about now in British politics? What do we talk about the sea change that is going on out there? You are trying to lead an insurgent party to replace yep. the main parties. Therefore, you're an important figure in this. I think we are going to have to move yep. to an insurance-based system of health care. I would feel more comfortable. My money would return value if I was able to do that through the marketplace of an insurance company than just trusting giving us £100 billion a year to central government. Do you still hold that if I was, If I was encouraged, opt out of the system to relieve the burden of the National Health Service, I would do so gleefully. Do you want to discuss these European elections or not? Yes, I certainly do. But Go I'm on, then. I, I, Go on, then. Let's try. Do you still believe that global, uh, worrying about global warming is the stupidest thing in human history? I believe that if we decide in this country to tax ourselves to the hilt, to put hundreds of thousands of people out of work in manufacturing industries, given that we produce less than 2% of global CO2, that isn't terribly intelligent. But as I say, here we are with one of the biggest changes in politics that's ever occurred, okay. and you're not even interested. Do you still What's want, wrong with the BBC? Do you still want to what roll, is wrong with the BBC? Do you still want to roll back gun controls and reintroduce handguns well, to this country? This sums it up. Do you know, I've been going around the country speaking at pack rallies every night, and do you know who's not there? The BBC. And from this line of questioning now, I can see why. Do you still you're, not, you're just not interested, are you? Do you still feel uncomfortable you with foreign languages being interested, spoken on trade? Let's talk about democracy, let's talk about trust, let's talk about competence in politics. This is ludicrous. Do you still feel that people with HIV shouldn't be allowed into this country? Do I think the National Health Service is there for British people? Yes, I absolutely do. So you, st you still do? Um, do you this is absolutely ludicrous. I've never in my life seen a more ridiculous interview than this. You are not prepared to talk about what is going on in this country today. You're in denial. The BBC's in denial. The Tory and Labour parties are in denial. I think you're all in for a bigger surprise on we, Thursday we week than you can it. even imagine. We have talked about it. Do you still admire Vladimir Putin? No. I've never admired Vladimir Putin. You, well, you asked, I said I wouldn't like you to You asked which country, current this world leader you most admired. You told GQ magazine... As an operator, but not as a human being, yes. I would say well, Putin. The way he so played the whole so Syria thing. Not as a human being. So I don't, like him as a, I don't like him as a human being. What is your question? What is the relevance of this? What I'm, is the relevance I'm, I'm of trying, to, I'm trying no, to work no, no, out I'm, who I'm, you are well, and where the well, Brexit I, Party, which wants to I, destroy the party system, asked, is you going. You haven't asked about a single other member of the Brexit Party. You haven't commented on the fact we've got the most diverse list of candidates of any party fighting in this election. From the Revolutionary Communist Party right through what, what, to the no, right. Well, that's worth discussing, isn't it? What, how have we managed to get left and right together? These things are really interesting to your viewers, not trawling back through the a series of quotes from years ago. Do you still want to slash the size of the state? Absolutely. I want people to have more freedom. Absolutely. And, you know, particularly 5.4 million people out there acting as sole traders, running small businesses, and there's nobody in government on their side. Let's make their lives easier. They'll create more jobs, pay more taxes, and it'll mm. be good for our country. Well, let's, let's return to the thing that you are most well known for, to a lot of people watching, which is that famous poster, the Breaking Point poster that UKIP put up. Right. Can I ask you, would the Brexit Party put that poster up? Well, we're in different circumstances, because Mrs Merkel is not suddenly saying, let's open our doors to everybody. Yeah, but and, and, and as you know, or maybe you don't, as years go by, decades evolve, different issues come to the fore. Throughout that period of time, there is no question that the number one issue in British politics was immigration, people's concerns mm. over open borders, its impact on wages, access to public health care. The number one issue in British politics now is democracy, the failure of our political parties to keep their promise. That is what the country is debating. But that, that post has sent a very, very clear message about migrants. Are you saying the Brexit Party would not put up a poster like that? Well, it wouldn't because it isn't the burning issue of the time. Do you regret it? Uh, do I regret helping that to win? That poster. Do I regret helping to win? Do you regret that poster well, and no, the message it, was, no, it, it, sort, it sort of it was, the, it was the truth. And if you think about that poster, it's transformed European politics, it's changed Italian politics. Mrs Merkel made a very big mistake. Nigel Farage, thanks very much indeed Thank for you. talking to us. And if you want to find...